JavaScript is a wonderful language for a beginner because it's just so simple to get started in terms of writing and editing code. In this tutorial, I want to take you through some of the different options that you have that are available to start writing and editing JavaScript code. We are going to explore three different ways in this tutorial to write, edit, execute JavaScript. First of all, take a look at some of the online editors that are available for us to write, edit, execute JavaScript code. Then we'll go ahead and download and install Visual Studio Code, which is a source code editor. That's going to allow us to write JavaScript code and we can then execute that by installing Node. And then thirdly, we'll go ahead and we'll create our own web page. We'll build a very simple web page and then we'll run that within our browser. That should give you a good overview of how you can get started writing, executing, editing JavaScript code. So let's take a look first of all at online editors. So let's just say this is a list of five editors. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of different ways you can start writing JavaScript code online. And this is just five examples of some of the different online editor compiler services that you can start utilizing to write JavaScript code. Well, let's just take a look at the first one. So if you don't have a CodePen account, go ahead, go online, type into Google codepen.io or just CodePen. Go ahead and just sign up. It's really simple uh, to sign up. It takes a couple of seconds. You don't get a confirmation email. As soon as you create an account, you get logged in. So I'll meet you over there. So once you've logged into Copen, you'll be presented with this interface. And you can see here, you can actually start typing in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is a great way for beginners to start learning not only JavaScript, um, JavaScript generally being a language that runs on the front end in your browser. So naturally, it tends to be tied with HTML and CSS. So you can see here, we've got the the three technologies here that we can work on. Now, how this works, really simple. If we, for example, change some of the code here and save, you can now see that it instantly changes. So we can start typing in code. Uh, maybe you want to utilize CSS and HTML at the same time, and you can start practicing utilizing the language. So this happens to be probably one of the fastest ways of getting started utilizing JavaScript. Some of the benefits of this, these services like Copen um, that you saw in the list, it will allow you to save code. So the advantage here being that you can go absolutely anywhere and access your code wherever you are on whatever device you use. Some of the different services, they do provide some of the more advanced features. But if you are a beginner to JavaScript, you'll probably just focus on writing some code. And this is definitely a good place to get started practicing your JavaScript. In my opinion, at least, it doesn't really matter what service you utilize, as long as you've got somewhere to write code, execute it, and see the output. Any of these services here online will be useful and help you out get started writing code. Our second option to get started utilizing JavaScript takes a few more uh, steps to get started. But ultimately, this is probably where you'll end up working in some sort of IDE integrated development environment or code editor. So I am recommending Visual Studio Code to get started. There are definitely many other uh, IDEs available, code editors available. This just happens to be one of the more popular at the minute, if not the most popular. So this is available on Windows, Mac and Linux. So you can just go ahead and type into Google Visual Studio Code or VS Code and then go to the home page and you'll be instantly probably taken to the page where you can then download the corresponding build for your different operating system. So as soon as you've downloaded and installed Visual Studio Code, you get it open and you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this. Now you can see that my screen probably looks slightly different because it's got different colors. So the first thing you might want to do is go over to the extensions here and go ahead and download some theme or color pack that you might want to utilize. I normally get asked what um, theme I'm using. So here I'm using Night Owl. So that we can start executing running JavaScript code with in Visual Studio Code, we're going to go ahead and download Node.js. So normally, if you're not too familiar with JavaScript, JavaScript is normally run uh, on the front end. That means that code will be downloaded from a server whenever you go to a web page, downloads to your browser, and then your browser 
renders or runs that JavaScript code um, in the browser. Now, when we're using Visual Studio Code, we don't have a browser there. So we're going to need a piece of software or some sort of tool to actually go ahead and execute our JavaScript. So this is what Node.js is going to provide here. It's, a, it's an engine that's going to execute JavaScript code outside of our web browser. So it's a pretty simple installation process. Again, it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Go ahead and just download this and install and we're ready to get started. So once Node's installed, you may need to restart Visual Studio Code here. Um, we can just drag this from the bottom here and open up the terminal. Um, and then we can just type in node uh, dash dash version. And that tells me that I'm running node 16.14.0. So that just confirms that node is working and running in the background so that I can start kind of executing my JavaScript code. So to start a project, you'll need to create a new folder, maybe on your desktop. So create a new folder and then go into Visual Studio Code and let's go to File, Open Folder. This is going to create a, a working folder for your project. So I'll create a new folder here. I've got some files already inside. So I'm just going to zoom in here now. There's a few different settings you might want to start um, straight away. For example, you'll find that you can't scroll in and you maybe you want to be able to do that. So if you go to file, uh, so code and preferences and settings inside of here, I'm just going to type in scroll, I think. Um, so mouse scroll we're looking for. Hmm. Okay. Um, wheel. That's the one, wheel. Wheel. Of course. Okay, so type in wheel and you've got this setting here. So we can now kind of zoom in. So that's the first thing you want to do. And secondly, what can be handy is go to file and then turn on auto save. Although you may never have written a single line of code, uh, let's just go ahead and type in console.log and then we're just going to output hello world. Okay, so this is going to allow me, this console log command here is going to allow me to send a signal uh, to the terminal to then output or print hello world. Right, so I'm going to lift up this terminal from the bottom or press the, the hotkeys or the shortcut, sorry, either way. So now what I need to type in is node and then the name of the file that I want to run. And you can see what happens now is node takes over, it executes this command and it outputs um, in the terminal hello world. So that's the outcome of typing this code here. So this is the second method of writing, editing and executing JavaScript code. Uh, throughout the rest of uh, the tutorials potentially on this channel, we'll be utilizing this type of method. So it'd be well worth getting familiar um, if you are going to follow other tutorials on this channel. It'd be well worth getting a little bit familiar with this type of setup, um, utilizing Node and Visual Studio Code. So that leads us over to the last option in our own web page. So we're now going to go through the simple process or a, a simple process of developing a very small web page whereby we will insert some JavaScript code and then we will run this code in our browser. So your web browser has built inside of it a way of kind of executing JavaScript code. It's all built in, similar to what we saw in the previous example of Node.js, but everything's built into your browser. So your browser is the, the third way here where we can execute JavaScript code. So back in Visual Studio Code, let's go ahead and create a new file. Uh, we'll just call this index.html. So we're going to build a very simple web page. Um, so let's go for doc type HTML. Uh, notice I've got these code hints here, and this is one of the benefits of utilizing a tool such as this. I don't need to type everything out. Behind the scenes, a Visual Studio Code is trying to work out potentially what I was going to write. It knows that I'm writing a HTML page. So I, first of all, I start off with my doc type. And this is basically telling my browser that I'm using HTML5, if you're not familiar with HTML. Uh, so let's go over and build some HTML uh, tags. So we need some outer HTML tags. And then we're just going to go for the body tags. So all my HTML code and JavaScript is going to be within the body. 
And now I can have a little kind of H1. So this is a heading tag. Just going to say hello world. Okay. So in addition to that, I'm just going to create a uh, a P tag here, paragraph tag, and I'm going to give it an ID. So this is an identifier which I can utilize um, with JavaScript to identify this element and then perform some sort of action. So I'm just going to call this hello for now. So that gives me an ID uh, for this element so I can identify that element and with JavaScript I can perform some sort of action. Right, so now I've got that in place, let's go ahead and create a, a new piece of JavaScript. So I'm going to use a script tag. So basically my JavaScript uh, or any JavaScript that's written inside of this HTML page needs to be between the script uh, tags here. So that denotes that there is some sort of script, in this case it's JavaScript. So what I want to do here, and again, I'm not fully explaining all this code, this is just an example to get started. But what I'm going to do is inside of these p tags here in this element, there is absolutely nothing inside of here at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the identifier to inject with JavaScript some text within this element. So I'm going to say document, docu document, uh, dot get element. Let me just move this across so we can see. Get element by and then ID. So the ID is here. So which ID do I want to grab? Well, that's going to be uh, hello. That's the name of the ID. And then what I want to do then is I want to say I want to go inside of this element and I want to inject something inside of it. So let's say dot inner um, HTML. And then that's going to equal, how are you? Question mark. Okay, so this is a piece of text and I'm going to inject inside of this P element here on the page. So that's the final code. Let me just uh, zoom in so you can see the whole thing. So in order to run this JavaScript, we now need to load this up with our browser and then the browser takes over it, it will then execute the script and then inject this word here, or these uh, this sentence, uh, into this P element. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's open up a new uh, browser window. And then what we can do is we can just drag this in, or we can go to File, and we can open File. Uh, so this is a, a Safari, it's gonna look work in a similar way. Um, with Chrome. Uh, so let's go ahead into a desktop. You can just go to a desktop and double click. It will open up in your browser. So inside of this folder, I've got this file here. So I'm just going to open that up. And you can see here it says, how are you? Okay, so what's happened there is that JavaScript has been read by your browser. So it executed that piece of code. And then it's injected these. And we can see here, if we inspect this element. Uh, it's then gone ahead and injected you can just about see it. Apologies for not being able to zoom in. You can just about see that the text is it's inside now of this P tag. So we'll go ahead and just do the same thing again on Chrome. So you can see here Chrome will allow us to file, open file. But like I said, you can just go to the desktop and just double click on the file. It should open. So press open and there we go. So those are the three options you have available. Now there is one other place. Now we have the browser open. In the browser, we have access to a console and we can type some JavaScript inside the console. So let's take a look. So this is Google Chrome. I'm gonna type or press F12. That brings up a suite of tools here. And you can see in the tabs, we have console. Apologies, this is a little bit small. So if you just type into this console, console.log, and then similar to what we did before, so I've got the double quotes here, uh, hello, and then in bracket, apologies, like I said, if it's super small. So it's console.log, uh, we've got the uh, parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we have double quotes and the word hello. So what I can do is I can run this from the console. If I press enter, you can see it then returns hello. So it has executed this piece of JavaScript. This console, not only can we output code, but it will act as a way of debugging our code later on. 
it's definitely worth uh, becoming a little bit familiar with that console, just being able to navigate to it, because like I said, it will be, if you're working on the web at least, a pr your primary source of uh, debugging or, or one ways you can see some of the different errors or what's happening in your code utilizing that console. So it is a very useful tool to know about um, once you start developing for the web. And there we have, in fact, four different ways where you can start writing, executing, editing JavaScript code.